In this short tutorial, we're going to show you how to make cushions using pressure. So last time we used force fields, this time we're going to use pressure. Last time I showed you how to create a pillow using force fields, this time I'm going to show you how to create a pillow using pressure. So first thing you do is you select your default cube, and we're going to press S to scale, Z on the Z axis, and type in 0 0.05, like we did in the previous example. Press numpad 7 for top orthographic view, press tab and go into edit mode. Hover your mouse on the top here, press Ctrl R, scroll up until you get to 50 cuts. Bottom left hand corner of your screen you can see the amount of cuts. And cl left click then right click and do the same over here. Ctrl R, scroll all the way up to 50 cuts. Left click then right click and just for fun we'll create one cut around the scene. And there you have it. Now we press tab, go into object mode and we're going to go to our physics properties, cloth and we're going to scroll all the way down to collisions and I'm going to set this to 5 it's very similar to what we did previously and I'm going to turn on self collisions and I'm going to turn on field weight and make gravity 0 so it doesn't move out of place one thing that is different is I'm going to activate pressure and let's just put pressure on 1 and once you've done that all you need to do is press spacebar watch your pillow grow, right click shade smooth and press spacebar when you want to pause if you're happy with this pillow you can pause it and leave it like that or you can keep on playing until you find a look and feel that you like so I'm going to go a little bit and see how what happens Let's, I'm going to leave mine on yeah once you find a design that you like all you need to do is go to your modified properties and while you're in object mode you want to apply and just like that uh, we have created a beautiful pillow and obviously you can still now that it's a mesh you can scale this so you can press S uh, Z and you can bring it in if you like to make it a little bit thinner and we can if you want to improve the resolution if we add a material you'll see there's a resolution problem here we'll do the same thing we did before let's make this glossy let's change to render view mode and let's see you can see these squares we can fix that i'm also going to change the world setting make it white like we did in the previous example just so it's a fair comparison and i'm going to click on the light source click on object data properties for light turn to sun change the, the power to 10 and change it to off white to a warm color somewhere there should be more than fine then i'm going to press shift a mesh and i'm going to use a plane and i'm going to scale this plane out so that when I look at it with a camera it covers the whole area and that's perfect I'm going to press numpad 1 and I'm going to press G to grab it Z on the Z axis and just bring it down to about there and I'm going to give this plane a material the material that I'll give it is a glossy material and I'm going to have to look at this through the render viewport and I'm going to make this 0 0.1 so it really really shines then I'm going to select the pillow and just give it a different color perhaps we want to make it I don't know yellow let's try yellow a little bit darker and then obviously you can mess with the shininess over here and choose a level that you like I kind of like that only thing we want to change now is the resolution. We go to modify properties and we add a subdivision surface and just like that it's done. In fact, if you're rendering this out, you probably want this on six so it, lo it looks super good. And yeah, just like that we've created a pillow. We want to go to our render settings, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and very importantly screen space reflection. It makes all the difference to the scene. And if you want to make the quality better of the EV render, two pixels, volumetric shadows and performance high quality normals and that should be more than enough for an interesting result last thing I'd do is select the camera object data properties for the camera and I would just bring this up zoom in a bit and there you have it and all we have to do is render this hope you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe